because I think about all your roles that you choose so carefully. Criminal Minds, though, we got to discuss because yeah. that was a 180. That was a 360. Yeah, that was crazy. I've had the weirdest career of any of my friends. Like, I really, I've done, I've gotten really lucky. I've gotten to do a lot of different stuff. Um, but Criminal Minds, yeah, that was, it was like right before Christmas one year. I, I, I had been, I hadn't really done any TV since Dawson's Creek, I don't think. And they, uh, I got a call that there's this role. It's going to be air right after the Super Bowl. This double, this two-parter, you play someone with multiple personality disorder or dissociative identity disorder. And I was like, wow, that's a really big challenge and a really big stage. And uh, I was like, let's do it. Let's, yeah. How cool them knowing you'd be great at that because what a departure for how we'd seen you before. What was the best part about playing that role? Um, the best part, honestly, it, and this is going to sound weird because I mean, it's, but it was uh, a different way of working for me that role. In, in the past, as a younger actor, I think I was always like thinking, oh, there's darkness. I've got to get there. I've got to get that darkness. I've got to be able to find it. And this one, I, can't, I, had, I was maybe old enough to recognize that there's so much darkness in the world, you just have to channel it. And really, it's all about doing it cleanly without it sticking to you. So it was more like energy work than it was any kind of acting technique. And it's, it's, it, I worked that way ever since. It really, it really changed the way I approached the role. Um, yeah, so it was, it was a wild experience. Well, fans went crazy over what was the response you heard? People were really surprised to this day on social media. It's like, well, I would say in like the top five things, top five projects people bring up if they've seen it. Yeah, it was really, really well written. It was basically perfectly written by Ed Bernaro and um, oh, I'm blanking on his name. He ran the show, Chris Mundy, um, wrote the second half. And it was just really, really well constructed. They got everything right in terms of disassociative identity or disorder and why it comes up and how it happens. And so I had done a bunch of research and, uh, and all the research synced up with, with what they did. Not everybody who has that <laughs> becomes a serial killer, just <laughs> as a- That's where your character evolved. Yes, that's from my particular character, but it kind of, it's a reaction to you know, abuse and pain. And some people just do that as a coping mechanism. They construct another personality. And so they, uh, yeah, they got it right. And it was really, I got to work with Matt, Matthew Gray Googler, who's just the, you know, great dude, great dude. And uh, uh yeah. It's been 21 years since Varsity Blues. Is it oh true? My God. You showed your kids, they weren't digging it. How was that possible? I tried to show them like the four seconds of the movie that I knew I could without cursing or swearing or nudity or some kind of thing that would make me want to bury my head in pillow. Um, and I got that wrong because I, 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 apparently I curse on the football field. So I was showing him some football scenes. Yeah, my son was not digging my accent. What he was that? like, Daddy, why are you talking? like, nah, 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 nah. And here's the thing, truthfully, I'll confide in you. I didn't really nail the accent until halfway through shooting. <laughs> I was 21 years old. We, kinda, we didn't really have a dialect coach. We had like a guy there to kind of say, no, say it like this. Um, and uh, so he wasn't wrong in his critique of my accent, but he's eight years old. And so I was like, shut up, kid. What did they think of your look, the hair and the whole bit seeing dad? So young, is that funny for them? It's really funny for them, yeah. They really like, it's so funny, the stuff that they gravitate towards, the stuff that they watch, things that I never would think that like- Like what? They would, they would be into. I did a Hallmark movie once, like way, way, way back. Those are my favorite, James. Those are my jam. Yeah. They feel so I, good, wrapped up with a bow. I wrapped up with a bow. It's like digestible little morsels of television. Oh, and, um, yeah. but yeah, so I did one like, way, way back in the day. And I was always like, eh, I did a Hallmark, but my kids love it. Love it. Do you remember my the- in -law, My in-laws love it. Like everybody who sees that, that movie loves it. So it's like, it's, you, you just never know in a career, like what, what people are gonna respond to and what they won't. Um, how is quarantine going with five kids? Not only five kids, five of the cutest kids no. I have ever seen. One's better looking than the next. The little blonde hair. I mean, they are adorable. Like, let's get specific though. Like, how's bath time, dinner time, bedtime? Like, I don't know how you're doing this. It's, you know, it's funny. Like, 
when it first started, all the kids actually wanted to sleep in our room. So we put mattresses in there and I lay down and everybody I loved was right next to me. And I, I felt like the richest man in quarantine. And I was you know, really appreciative because I know a lot of people are not with their loved ones. A lot of people are separated from their family and their children because they're working, they're essential workers. So like I had a really, really deep appreciation. And then I think like everybody, then it just got nutty. <laughs> And it got wild and you're like, what is going on? And then you, you, and then we've kind of hit this like place of, sim of simplifying. We're just like more simplicity, less busy work, only doing what is really important and, and spending more time with the kids. I mean, bedtime is still, you know, trying to like push water uphill, <laughs> you know, like it's, it's they, and they stay up later and later but there's really nothing to wake up for. So I, it's hard to, to argue with them that they have to get to bed earlier if they sleep in. Um, it's just been a very different lifestyle. And it's, I, I will say, it's funny, people say, you know, how do you do it with five? And I look at people with one kid and I'm like, how yeah, do you hard. do it with one? I think that's way harder. I'm gonna get a lot of credit for five and I'll take it, bring yeah. it on. But um, I, I honestly, I might, I, to anybody out there with one or two kids, you guys are the true heroes. Um, there's a new reality show coming out called The Doricos. You and your wife have to watch. They have 14 kids. They had two kids regularly. This is all natural. Then they had quintuplets, triplets, and two sets of twins. And they're all like under the age of 14 or something crazy. They are adorable. Oh my God. <laughs> After the quintuplets, they didn't say, you know what, I think we're done. <laughs> Triplets and double set of twins, all natural. Wow. Yeah. That is, that is wild. That's, that's, a, that's a crew there, man. I mean, that's, yeah. It's like a birthday party at my house. I'm thinking the Vanderbeeks. If I know the Vanderbeeks, like I know the Vanderbeeks, I think that you're going to give the Doricos a run for their money. How's school going to go? Does that fall more on your wife? Then you, I really think about people. I have three teenagers, so they do their own thing. Young kids, and then if you have to work, and what do you do? I mean, this would be a whole thing. Yeah, it's, it was, honestly, by the end of the year, they, we were kind of homeschooling. We were a homeschool co-op anyway. Um, by the end of the year, we were like, you know what? If, if they're not going back before the end of the year, we're just going to take it at our own pace. Because yeah. shuffling, because they'd be three of them in it, from Zoom call to Zoom call. And organizing that and, and just getting all the work prepared and at the pace that everybody else was moving was just too much. So we've kind of take, we've, we've been pretty chill about it. We've taken it into the summer a little bit and then, you know, we'll see. Every, everything's kind of a holding pattern right now. What are the ages now of all five? They are two, four, six, eight, and almost 10. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Sensational. That is, I'm 18, 17, 13, and I'm sort of wow. missing where you are, though. My favorite thing was, I miss bath time. I miss when they got out smelling so good, and I would tuck their pajamas so tight. I miss that. Yeah, yeah I know. They're, when they're, their hair finally smells clean, it's, smells it's a clean. beautiful thing. Oh, yeah. uh, you really just had your 10-year anniversary, too. What did you do to celebrate? We, uh, we went to Texas, actually. Yeah. Yeah, I took you to Texas. Um, we got out of the house. We got some open air. Um, it was it was really nice. It's the first first solo time we'd had in quite a while. What does a decade feel like uh, being married for you? If honestly, it feels like I've known her like four years. I really, I was like, I can't believe it's been ten years. I feel like I just barely met you. Um, but you know, it's been a crazy ten years. So we've had a lot happen. Yeah. And and I look back at who we were when we met too, and. <laughs> We were, uh, we've certainly grown a lot since then. What surprises you the most about her? She has the greatest capacity for growth, spiritual, emotional growth that I, of anybody I've ever met. There's, she's like an unlimited pool of potential. And I know she hates, she, when she says, what do you love about me? And I say, your potential. She's like, Sh really? Like, great answer. By the way, any, any husbands out there, not the best answer to give, but it's actually the real one because um, I'm really just floored by how she's able to go through things and transform and come out the other end and grow. I'm, I'm just really kind of in awe of her on like a daily basis. 
I think you're a romantic. Are you very romantic? There's this whole new Zen James thing going on now too with you now. You just seem very calm and centered. Yeah. Always have, but is it sort of a newer feeling? I don't know. I sense something different. Yeah, we've been through a lot and I've just really, we've really been simplifying. I just, uh, I've just been really conscious of like what I'm consuming food wise, media wise. Is it good for me? Is it elevating me? Is it, um, is it frustrating me? Am I getting energy? What kind of energy? I've just been really just way more conscious of that, you know, being, having less busy work to do. There was, yeah. I, I realized there were so many things and meetings and projects and things I would entertain. And now I'm just really being way more conscious of what I'm taking in and what I'm putting out. You're free in that space to open up to what's important, which is yeah. what, well, that's how I feel as well. Yeah, um, and, to, and to prioritize. Yeah, right? which I think everybody's doing to some degree. And it, you know, but it all goes in phases, right? Like there are times you're like, oh, wow, this is great. And then four hours later, you're like, you're about to pull your hair out. <laughs> so you gotta, before you know. 15, I don't know about y'all, but I, I was definitely on the hamster wheel. And I can imagine with five kids, I was just in the car, dropping off, picking up dinner. Who's got a project? What, what's where yeah. sports? And I loved it. But to take a beat and slow down was really centering for me. It took a minute to settle into that. But yeah, I can sense that with you. I think that's really cool. Yeah, I think everybody's kind of looking at, you know, just you know, life and what's important and how, and how to, you know, when we do eventually come out of this, I, I don't think, I don't think we want to go back to the way things were. I think we really want to come out different and better. You're a rose colored glasses guy like me. I'm like, there's gonna be a positive with all of this, right? I mean, at the end of everything we've learned from this and take, even the way we're doing these interviews now that allow yeah. you to there like that's nice that's more family time yeah i it's it's less drive time it's less wait time it's um yeah i mean yeah rose colored glasses i guess but i i don't i don't see the benefit in panic and fear and 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 dread so just by by making that choice and saying okay this is going to be good for us as a species as a family as a city you know as a country um, I really just think it, it then informs the kind of choices that you make day to day. If you make that decision that this is all going to, this is all going to benefit us. Um, Dan, that's, a, that's, that's, what I, that's what I'm clinging to. <laughs> oh, I like it. Uh, Dancing with the Stars, the 29th season coming back. What do you think of Tyra as the host? Um, I, you know, I think it'll be very different. I, I just want to say, I mean, you know, Tyra's amazing, but I really, really appreciated Tom and Aaron for, um, for their heart and just what a calming, cool presence they were in the eye of that storm. Um, and, you know, Tyra obviously is incredibly accomplished and, and she'll do a great job. But, uh, but yeah, whenever anybody asked me about Tyra, I just, I really appreciated Tom uh, so much that I always, I always like to put out a nice word for him. Did you have any special moments with him? I was always freaking out whoever was on there. That is so much pressure, that show. And it's live. I mean, when I would just be in the ballroom watching, I would be nervous. Yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy because it's live. It's 100% live. Um, there's no, there are no do-overs. There's no stopping. There's, there's nothing pre-taped. It is a dance floor. And you doing a dance you learned six days ago as a non-professional dancer in front of the world with judges. With tight um, and glitter and weird shoes that you don't normally wear. Exactly. When heels that big and yeah. like, yeah, yeah. Well, for a guy, women, they're, they're bigger. <laughs> um, but the, the, yeah, I mean, the, my favorite moment with Tom was uh, my parents came and saw the, uh, the contemporary that I did. And after we, we finished, um, my mom was watching and she was over in the front row. And Tom said, look at your mom. In the middle of all that, he it kind of checked in with her and he put his uh, hand on my back and gently just kind of nudged me to go over to her. And so I ran over and gave her a hug and I posted this on my Instagram. And uh, it was one of the best moments that I have with my mom. And she recently passed about a month ago. And so uh, I think when I think about her, I, that's one of those moments that I that I come to and I was that would not have happened without without a host who was really leading with their heart I agree I think yeah. he's a replaceable Tom Bergeron what a guy 
I mean, the way he, you know, he's America's dad. I think he guided everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He did. He was he was kind and fun and super quick on his feet. That's that's one thing I noticed being on the show because you watch it on TV, you kind of expect everything to work out. But when you're there in the middle of that, <laughs> you realize that not everything does work out. And uh, and to watch him be be so quick uh, was really fun. But you know, Tyra brings a whole different skill set. Gotta be interesting. I can't wait to see what expertise she does. to it. Right? Yeah. Maybe make really, it competitive or like thinking about her past shows hosting. It could be interesting. Yeah, it'll. She'll definitely bring. Uh, I think a, a kind of fun edge to it. So, but I'll be, I'll be, I'll be watching. And it'll be different too. I don't know what they're going to do about audiences and. Oh, did, so no audience and anybody of the dancers that are a couple, everybody has to be quarantined separately. So the dancers that cannot live together. Yeah, I know. Emma told me that. Emma, what my did partner, you say Emma. I said, can I join my husband? I will take a break. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I said to Emma, I was like, so who gets the house? So <laughs> What'd she say? But uh, Sasha gets the house because Sasha will take care of the dogs. So that's, <laughs> that's the uh, trade off. I noticed on your social media though, you're doing some dancing from home. Yeah. How is that? What are you doing? I am doing everything that I can. I, you know, it's wild. At 43, I discovered an art form that I love that, um, that I was actually pretty good at. So, you know, that was the best possible boot camp. Uh, of an introduction to it, to learn all those different ballroom styles so intensely, six, seven hours a day. And so now I'm kind of looking at, all right, well, how do, how do I move? What do I bring to it? Um, once we're allowed to have audiences again, I'm really looking forward to getting back on stage. I was supposed to do a musical at the Kennedy Center uh, okay. before COVID, before COVID. So yeah, it's a, you know, I've always been threatening to pull out that, that's, that singing card uh, that I that I that I keep deep down in my bag of tricks. Come on, um, come on. So you pair that with the dancing, and I'm looking at a fun uh, at a fun pre-retirement plan. Tell uh, me about this musical. I love this side. I've only heard you sing a couple of times in various roles, but this would be outstanding, James. Come yeah, on. I um, yeah. I was supposed to do Bye Bye Birdie at the Kennedy Center with uh, Harvey Firestein and like, this Harvey. amazing cast. I know he was going to play my mother. <laughs> I'm in. You have yeah, me right. I know, right? Just just for that alone, I was like, oh man. To get to watch to get to watch him work an audience, I was really excited about. Uh who knows what's gonna happen now, but uh but just putting my you know, my my hat in that ring was uh was a lot of fun. So I don't know what the project is. I'm working on a couple, I'm writing a couple things. Two of them could involve dance. Um yeah, it's uh, it's something I definitely can, can plan on continuing. Uh, it's so exciting and it's so great to talk to you. I literally was looking so forward to this. I'm really oh, excited too. about your mom and uh, sending you my, my thoughts and prayers. Please hug Kimberly and five of the cutest kids I have ever seen. Are, are any of them there? Can they just come hug you so I can look at them? Is anybody I, <laughs> I, I'm a, I had strict rules. Nobody comes in the pool house for the next <laughs> hour. <laughs> so quiet. And so, so there was about a 40% chance that no kids would come in with, with when I really set the, the law down. Yeah, my, uh, <laughs> about a 40% chance they might listen, but they're not here right now. James, I just think about throughout the years, I'm really happy for your life. Of course, your career is going to go great. You're so talented, but I really like the life you've carved out. I'm really happy for you. Oh, thank you so much. It was really a pleasure to talk to you. You too. All right, stay in touch, guys. Don't forget to check out James and the Criminal Minds Summer Stakeout on WeTV.